As I walked the halls of Appalachia High School, I was determined to find something that made the school unique compared to other high schools in Georgia. When I discovered that there were classes that used a gradeless policy, I knew that was something different or at least unusual. My name is Sam Jorgensen. I teach pre-calculus and algebra two. So gradeless class is um, a class where we're using a alternate grading system than like what is traditional with the zero through 100 scores, um, you know, on quizzes and tests and things. Uh, the goal was um, kind of to challenge ourselves to not use grades as, as punishments um, and to reduce some of the stresses that comes with um, you know, giving students grades, like they really internalize those, um, or, you know, when a grade gets too low and a student gets um, too discouraged and they want to give up. So the idea is we can remove grades, get rid of a bunch of negatives, and give students more feedback and um, maybe some more autonomy in their own, their own results. So the primary way I provide feedback to students is, is still similar to a traditional classroom where they'll you know, turn in a written assignment of some kind and I'll um, grade it, well, and I grade it by marking it up with you know, annotations, you know, I'll circle, hey, you missed a negative right here, or this should have been a sine function and you did a cosine function. I'll ask a lot of questions on there, like um, if they come up with a, you know, they do a calculation and get a wrong value, you know, say, hey, how did you get this value? Um, and so there's lots of lots of comments on there, um, along with one overall statement, um, kind of for each section of, of rating, like their, their mastery of a thing. So I'll say high mastery or average mastery or minimum mastery. Um, and but it's not just like a point here or a spot here. It's more of a like general take. It took them. It took them a minute because obviously it's, it hasn't happened to them before, um, so it's a new thing. And, and at first they were like really confused. They're like, "Wait, am I passing? Am I failing? What's this mean?" Um, but that's why we tried to still with stick with some kind of basic like high average um, minimum type idea because you tell a student like you did highly on this. You know, they kind of know what that means or this was minimum, they kind of track, oh, that's that's close to a 70, that's just, just barely passing. Um, nobody like, you know, went to a counselor and got their class changed immediately um, <laughs> because, you know, I said, we're gonna try this grade list thing. On a daily basis, um, I think it still looks similar to any other um, math class you would find here um, at Appalachie. Um, I give fewer assessments or take up fewer um, classwork assignments, I think. Um, I try to get students up working on, uh, there's, there's boards in my classroom all around and then I have them work on that. Um, and you know, every once in a while you get this, well, if it's not for a grade, why would I do it? But if we're working at the whiteboards, it gets erased right when it's time to do the next problem anyway. So. Um, I don't know, they get, they get a thumbs up or a point or a head nod every time they get something right and, and then they're ready to move on. And I think that, you know, that suits them, them well enough. So this is the first time I've tried the gradeless classes and I might make a couple tweaks to it, but I still think there's a lot of merit there and a lot of value in, in changing up the grading system a little bit. Um, just because I feel like we haven't had any major negatives with it. Student motivation hasn't seemed to change at all. And, and we get that conversational feedback um, that I think is good for both building relationships and um, hopefully they'll listen more to that than just like, again, look at it. Oh, I got a 98, move on. So As I continued my search for more teachers who taught a gradeless class, I was wondering if their opinion about such classes would change. And that's when I came across Mr. Lenartz, who's a physics teacher. I really think I would like to have taught or tried to teach a gradeless class in something like environmental or zoology, but in physics it is so heavily math-based that I found myself as the class was progressing getting farther and farther behind in trying to give my students relevant and timely feedback. Um, it, would, it seems odd, but 
when you're trying to do grade lists, you're trying not to just do A, B, C, D answers, you're trying to get them to work through problems, look at the problems and give them individual coaching on where they're going astray in their calculations. With a class of 30 students, you cannot do that in a timely manner. So uh, I got decided that for their good, as much as for my own sanity, to drop it and go back to a graded system. Didn't do a very good job of providing feedback. I tried to sit down with a few of my students that were either doing exceptionally well or exceptionally poorly and work with them one-on-one. -on -one, and I found I had uh, a divergence of their ability to swallow my feedback. If they were A grade performers, they were upset and nervous about whether they were gonna have an A for the course. And they were continually frightened about I don't think I'm doing well enough. I, I don't see grades. I, I, I'm missing this touchstone, if you will. And the low performers were saying, no grade? <laughs> cool. And they assumed no grade meant no work, and that's where they went. As I continued my journey on investigating ungraded classes, I was curious about how parents and students would feel as well. So as a parent of Pierce in Spanish, I, I'm okay with it. Uh, I know that he's he's a pretty motivated student, so he will see a grade of of MM for minimal mastery and he'll treat that the same way he would see a grade of a, a 70 or whatever and know that that means that he needs to improve. Um, so I'm okay with it. His teacher was very upfront at the beginning with how it was going to work and she's clearly defined everything throughout uh, the semester. So it's been a good experience for, for me as from the parent side. Okay, so if I, as a parent, log in to look at my son's grades and I click on his, his Spanish class, which is a gradeless class, um, I can scroll and I can see his level of mastery on his assessments and his teacher is kind enough to define them off to the side. So for example, I see on his unit five assessment, his score is HM, which she has defined as high mastery. And then the second level five, I see an MM, so that's a minimal mastery. So I know and he knows that that's something that he would need to work on uh, to reach the high level. No, I feel just as motivated as I would in a normal class. In the beginning, I was scared going into it that I wouldn't understand what my grade is throughout the semester. But now I feel like you can still look in the grade book and see what your grade is and see how you are doing in the class and how you're progressing as you go throughout the semester. Yeah, I feel like I learn it better than I normally would because I don't have to focus on like what my grade is of this test is going to be or a quiz is going to be is that I could focus on improving what I need to improve and progressing in the class. While exploring gradeless classes at Appalachian High School, I learned that it's a new thing. It just started this year. And while some teachers are supportive of the ideas, others are not. And most parents seem okay as long as they understand what the grades mean.